Well, so, so the Batek are one of many groups of indigenous people living in Pinsir, Malaysia called Orang Asli, which literally means original uh, people. And for the past at least 10,000 years or so, they've been engaged in this hunting and gathering way of life uh, that involves an element of trade with outsiders as well. So they're not only good at getting food for themselves out of the forest, whether it's meat, tubers, honey, and so on, um, but they also procure forest products that they then sell to, uh, to outsiders. Yeah, the Batek are thought to be unique among hunter-gatherers in their um, egalitarian social structures. Um, of course, there's a lot of variation within hunter-gatherers and pastoralists and agriculturalists in levels of egalitarianism. But one of the things that Kirk and Karen Endicott noted in the 1970s was how equal the uh, genders are um, in kind of their contribution to the food supply and decision-making power. Um, so this is a very interesting uh, phenomenon for biological anthropologists as well as social and cultural anthropologists, how is this kind of egalitarianism maintained? And so that's part of our research interest is to, is to understand the ecological factors driving that egalitarianism. And so from my standpoint, I'm a human behavioral ecologist. Um, I see this from who is, who is producing what and, and why, what are the constraints on production? And we know that um, women tend to gather because food acquisition for them needs to be compatible to an extent with child care. And that's much more difficult when you're doing persistence hunting or um, really any kind of hunting. Um, you can't have a crying baby on your back when you're trying to stalk a, um, a monkey, for instance, in, in the case of the Batek. So from a behavioral ecological perspective, um, we see these differences b between the genders in, in foraging behavior as resulting from the inherent biological constraints that they face. Um, but what's interesting is that in a lot of societies, such as the Batek, the calories coming in uh, for men and women are quite similar. And this has profound downstream consequences on, on their social behavior. Um, for one, if you have both genders bringing in equal amounts of food, they have basically equal say, or in a lot of cases, women have more say um, in where to go next, okay? Where to move your camp next. This could be um, near your relatives, for instance. Um, so as, as, a, as a foraging ecologist, I see food as the basis of everything, and I think it's a, a pretty powerful um, kind of mode of explanation for uh, human behavior. I would say that deforestation is one of the major challenges facing both wildlife and people in Southeast Asia, and particularly people who have relied on the forest for their traditional way of life. And what we find is that when uh, women who typically go out and acquire tubers, which are the main starch supply, the main carbohydrate source for the population, when this gets replaced by, by rice, okay, this cheap agricultural product, um, they basically no longer have anything to do. And it can sometimes be dangerous for them to go out to leave their encampments um, into you know, the outside world. So it's the men who tend to engage in, in wage labor. Um, they're bringing in most of the money, and the women uh, are shifting increasingly to staying at home, taking care of kids, but they're not as involved in the economy as they used to be. And we think that this is having downstream effects on, on the social behavior, on their decision-making power. And another element is that um, Malaysia is, of course, an um, Islamic country, and exposure to the outside has kind of changed their interactions with, with outsiders. Things are changing a lot, but what's remarkable is how resilient they are also in um, maintaining their traditional religion and language and culture.